Cora TV. The world is thinking. Many people have said openly this is a refutation of the end of history. Uh, radical Islamists, Osama bin Laden, the Al-Qaeda folks do not want modernization in any way, shape, or form. Not only don't they want liberal democracy, they don't want a modern consumer society. And so they are very determinedly stuck um, in the Middle Ages. Now, I have always felt, um, uh, even after September 11th, that this is actually giving these groups uh, too much credit because, in fact, with the um, one complicated exception of Iran, certainly none of the Sunni groups have succeeded in coming to power in a single country. And in those places where they have succeeded, uh, Saudi Arabia, Afghanistan, Iran, uh, this is not uh, uh, for anybody else that is not uh, an alienated Muslim living at the fringes of, of a Muslim society. These are not successful models of development that other people around the world uh, want to uh, emulate. And the desire to promote this kind of political Islam uh, really does not, you know, it's not something that's typically felt by people that are not culturally Muslim uh, to begin with. Now, the deeper question that's been raised by a lot of scholars is whether there are permanent cultural obstacles to modernization either in the economic or in the political form and that somehow uh, this one particular cultural group represents uh, a particularly severe uh, obstacle. My general uh, view of that is it's extremely unlikely that this is true, uh, that there is really, as far as I can see, no inherent reason in the religion itself, Islam, uh, to think that in a, uh, a Muslim society cannot modernize economically, and in fact you've had several fairly successful cases of that, like uh, uh, Turkey and uh, uh, Malaysia or Indonesia at a lower level uh, of development. Uh, and I also think there's no particular reason why a Muslim society cannot uh, sustain, create and sustain a liberal democracy. And again, you've got a number of examples. Again, Turkey, Mali, Senegal, uh, Indonesia since 1997. So the question is really, what is the radical um, rejection of modernity being driven by? And here I would say it comes less out of uh, the religion Islam per se, because the Islam is a religion, uh, it's very legalistic, it's very uh, rooted in local uh, traditions and customs that define and ascribe to individuals uh, their particular identities. But what's very interesting about the people in the contemporary world that tend to be attracted to these uh, Islamist or jihadist groups is that they actually are not people living in traditional Islamist, Islamic societies. They are people living at the fringes of Western societies. Sometimes that's the case when they live in Western Europe in Muslim minority communities, as was the case of Mohammed Atta or uh, uh, Muhammad Bouyeri, who was, uh, killed the Dutch filmmaker uh, Theo van Gogh, or the July 7th uh, subway bombers in London. Sometimes the alienation comes when the modern world comes to visit uh, people in the Middle East in the form of internet, um, uh, television, um, uh, you know, the Western cultural onslaught that we associate with uh, globalization. And I would argue that the extremism you see is actually the result of actually what is a fairly familiar loss of identity uh, for people that are caught in this cultural no man's land between traditional societies and successfully modernizing societies. It's quite interesting that successfully modernizing societies like India and China do not produce this kind of terrorist, but they really come more out of a stratum of people that have been exposed to modernization but have not gotten on uh, the train uh, successfully. And this actually, I think, makes the phenomenon something, it, it's, it's not that it should make you feel good about it, but it's something we've seen before because that was the classic uh, sociological explanation for the social origins of both fascism and Bolshevism, that typical Bolshevik or fascist was a working class uh, person who did not find a home in the industrialized world, 
just left the village, the tightly uh, woven community, now living in a big city without a clear identity. Hitler comes along and says, I'll tell you who you are, you are a German, and I think Osama bin Laden in, in many ways has been doing that. He says, I'll tell you who you are, you're a member of this global uh, Muslim uh, Ummah, uh, and I can define your identity very precisely in terms of the following ideology. So, uh, that doesn't mean that we are not gonna have a lot of big problems dealing with um, this political movement uh, now, but uh, I just do not think that this is, you know, rises to the level of a um, civilizational uh, challenge.